we get murdered. Shit, look at that. That's the Russian number five. That's how it is. The Zach Show. This video is sponsored by Free Trade. You're about to join us as we wake up for the first time in a dodgy Russian Airbnb after arriving here in the early hours of the morning and only having two hours of sleep. We were in Russia for the 2018 World Cup and had sort of made it across the border using a slightly dodgy method with the visas. But all was looking good. We had just woken up with a couple of hours before the England-Belgium game and boy, what a day we were about to have. Guys, I don't mean to alarm both of you, but have you seen the chicken foot? <laughs> oh no, he's not joking either. <laughs> we still needed to get our official fan IDs before the game, so we headed into the center of Kaliningrad. If you haven't watched part one, then these are the visas that allow you to legally be in Russia. You're able to apply for a fan ID when you buy a ticket to a game, which we didn't have. We applied using somebody else's ticket we found on Instagram. So this is a bit risky, and I had no idea what I was about to walk in on. Will I be arrested instantly when they took my name? I actually couldn't believe it worked and that they didn't ask to see my ticket. We felt extremely lucky and now had one foot in the door to get in the stadium. All that was left was to find a game ticket, so we hit the streets in search of someone selling one. No luck in the streets, but we headed to the fan zone to see if anyone was selling tickets there. Welcome to FIFA Fanfest Kaliningrad! England versus Belgium. Who love football? Raise your hands! Woo! Right, George, to sum up, to sum up the fan fest in five words. Following football all around Europe, and that is the most disgusting commercial dribble of football I've ever seen. It's disgusting. <laughs> Jamie, that was utterly <laughs> shit. <laughs> right, so the fan bark was absolute. Right, so we're gonna head towards the stadium to try and get a ticket last minute, but oh, I don't know how it's gonna work. We've made our way towards the stadium with no plan. We've got a guy who potentially will sell us tickets, but he's not replying, so we're gonna look at the gym. <laughs> I mean, if I made a million hundred percent, but I don't want to do that. Well, Zach's only doing it for content, you know. So that's how it takes to need fan ID and a ticket. Bottom line, it's a nice I walk. don't want to miss a game for a nice walk. <laughs> now we're running out of time. What's up? Well, is that? What are you doing? The only shout is going to be that you have to get behind like a drunk fan and have to split up. And you can go behind them in a the turnstile and jump through. That, that's the only thing. Hello, me here to break the tension so I can pay rent. Free Trade! The legends have sponsored this video. Free Trade is an award-winning, commission-free investing app which means you pay no commission when investing in stocks, allowing you to keep more of your profits. If you're a rational thinking human and you want to try and gradually make your money go upwards so that you can retire one day, and hello, free trade may be for you. They've made it really simple to buy stocks with their app and you can invest from as little as two pound in companies like Amazon, Tesla, and many more. I must remind you that I'm not a financial advisor and that when you are investing, your capital is at risk. So the value of your portfolio can go down as well as back up and you may get back less than what you start with. So whether you're trying to grow your savings to buy a house or trying to create a source of passive income, go to freetrade.io forward slash Zach and Jay, download the free trade app, create and fund your account. And here's the good bit. You'll get a random free share worth anywhere between three and 200 quid. 
A little sweetener for you. Back to Russia. After seeing the layers of airport style security outside the stadium, we realized there was absolutely no way we could get through without a ticket. The jib would have to wait until we were inside. And now we shifted our focus to find someone selling a ticket last minute. Everybody got a ticket! More ticket! We will pay good money! <laughs> we still don't really know what we're doing. Still sort of no ticket. As luck would have it, Jamie managed to find someone selling tickets. So with literally like 15 minutes until kickoff, we legged it to find the man. The hunt for a ticket was so long that the game started and we had to run. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to get tickets for seats in the same part of the stadium. So, I was now on my own. Brilliant. Thankfully, I made it in just in time for the start of the game. Now, for most people, they could now relax and watch the game you had travelled thousands of miles to see. But for me, I was playing my own game. As ever, I've always wanted to push things, and that's what a stupid thought comes into my head. Being the one that always wants to push boundaries and see what you can get away with, I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I sat on the sub bench with the England players and watched the game from pitch side? And that was sort of it at that point. I was hell bent. And watching the footage back now, three years later, it was so stupid. But I needed to find Jamie and George first, who both had tickets to the seats on the lower levels. And so began my way down in the hope I would be able to get to them. It seemed like every stairwell was blocked off. I really had no idea what was going on, but managed to hold station near these nice leather seats. This was going to be a lot harder than expected. I still needed to go down one more level and it was heavily guarded with security all on the stairwells. I quickly realised if I wanted to sit amongst the England players I was going to have to do it myself. So I started looking for alternative routes down. I noticed a member of security guarding the entrance to the elevator so I just needed to wait until they were distracted. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait long, as five minutes later, the security guard took a quick sit down just at the side of the elevator, so it's time to pounce. I swiftly walked past and pressed a button, but the elevator was on a different floor. The longer I stood there, the more likely I was to get caught, and the lift was taking painfully long to reach my floor. So I've managed to get into <laughs> some like, I don't know, comfy leather seat section. I don't really know where it is, um, but I'm going to try and go low. I don't know if this is moving or not. And just like that, I had taken one lift into the basement of the stadium where the staff were. All I needed to do was find a way out to the players' tunnel and onto the field. After seeing a bloke, I noped out and headed back to the lift for safety. For some reason, after nearly getting caught on level 1, I thought level 2 would be a great shout. 
I had no idea what was behind the door, but I was getting desperate. But here's where I made a huge mistake. Curiosity got the better of me and I decided to try use my camera to see under the door. This brief moment of distraction meant I forgot to keep the lift doors open. I started spamming buttons, but they just didn't seem to be working from this side. It's not working. The button is not working. This was seriously bad. I was trapped in this tiny room with no way out. I couldn't even contact the boys because there was literally no signal down here. Plus, they were enjoying the game anyway. This was getting serious. If someone got in the lift and caught me here, I'd hate to think what would happen. I just needed the lift to stop on my floor and for there to be no one waiting outside of it. Well, if you've made it this far with me and you've seen me dodge about 50 different security guards for your viewing pleasure, then feel free to hit subscribe. It's free and we make videos every single week. Oh my God, I was shitting myself. I don't know who he was or who he thought I was, but that was the most awkward elevator ride I've ever experienced. As fate would have it, I'm now back on the bottom security floor and the temptation got the better of me once again. This was it, my last attempt to finally meet some of the most protected men in our country. I knew I couldn't afford to put one foot wrong. My path was blocked by two security members chatting to each other. Luckily they didn't notice me, but it was time to get out of here. So as I sat there and enjoyed the game for a brief moment, I couldn't stop thinking about going back down to the bottom level to give it one last try to reach the players. I need to go on the bottom floor. I knew if I could just find the right floor, I'd be on to a winner. So I went back. I waited till the coast is clear and went for it. Luckily, the person who came out the lift was not security. There it goes. It's that door again. My only plan was to get as far in as I could, so I kept walking, praying that no one would see me and I would figure out a way through. Thankfully, there was no one at the end of the corridor this time, so I kept going, but it was a dead end. I took refuge in the toilets for a minute. If someone caught me this deep in the security area, I'd hate to think what the Russian police would do to me. But I wasn't going to meet the players sat in the toilet, so I had to keep on moving. That was insane. She knew something wasn't right, but she was probably too confused to say anything. With all the voices coming down that corridor, I thought it was best to try a different route. Another ridiculously close shave. There was literally a guy sitting right behind the door. 
I started exploring elsewhere, but it seemed every direction I went, there was another door with people behind it. And then while I was planning my next move, two members of staff walked right in. So just like that, my mission had come crashing down in probably the best way possible. I don't care what you say about the Russian people, they are wonderful. And I was so grateful not to be getting arrested right now. So I just got, got asked to stop from walking around downstairs. Um, this is so much scarier in Russia. Uh, I tried. They closed the door now, so it's not happening. But, uh, yeah. I'm not too sure why I was acting so casual there. I was very lucky to walk into two nice blokes who wanted to guide me back to the right place. But as always, the mission wasn't over. So I shifted my focus to getting down to watch the second half with Jay and George. After eventually locating them, Jamie tried to throw his ticket up to me. I spotted one of the security watching him and tried to warn Jamie, but it was too late. These two men are British undercover security. They approached Jamie and George after seeing Russian police grabbing them both and basically saved their ass. They were there to save drunk British English fans doing something stupid. Anyway, through all that mess, I managed to bag Jamie's ticket. And after getting lost at least three times, How do I get out of this side? I finally made it to the correct entrance. Now all there was left to do was enjoy the last 15 minutes of getting thrashed by Belgium. And I think it's safe to say George was enjoying it too. Well, I may have failed on the little mission to sit next to the England players, but if Russia has taught us anything, it is that you can't judge a book by its cover. It was an amazing country with even better people, and our whole experience there was just one I'll remember for the rest of my life. That being said, we do have some unfinished business in Russia. A few years back, we took the longest bus ride across America with Yes Theory, and we challenged them to up the levels. We have found something just a little bit better. A train ride from London to Singapore. It's over 10 days long. We want all four of you this time. You've officially been challenged. The world's opening back up again. So yes, theory. Who wants it? Hope you enjoyed this video. Also, head on over to our Instagram, at Zach and Jay. We're gonna be doing a Q&A after this video as well. See you there. See you next week.